Number one says, based on musical productions, a theater predicts selling 400 minus 8P tickets when each ticket sold is P dollars. Complete the table to find out how many tickets the theater expects to sell and what revenues it expects to receive at the given ticket price. So the number of tickets sold is using this equation. And then revenue is the amount of money brought in. Um, so not so the, the, the money times the tickets, right? So the price of the ticket times the ticket. So for this equation here, we're going to be doing 400 minus 8P. And then for revenue, we're going to be taking the number of tickets sold. So this number and multiplying it by the cost of the ticket. So for this first one, it says 500, right? So we'll do 400 minus 8 times 5, and that gives us 360 tickets that were sold. And those tickets sold cost $5 each, so we'll multiply 360 times 5, and that will get us a revenue of $1,800. For the next one, we have ticket prices at $10. So we'll do 400 minus eight times 10. And that gives us 320 tickets that are being sold. So we have 320 tickets sold and they're being sold at $10 per ticket. So we'll take 320 times 10 and that will give us $3,200. If we change the ticket price to $15, we will sell 400 minus eight times 15. And if we do that, we get 280 tickets being sold. So then we'll have 280 tickets being sold at $15 a piece. And that will give us a total revenue of $4,200. 400 minus 8 times 20, if we change the ticket price to $20, we'll sell 240 tickets. And then the revenue that we'll get will be 240 times 20. And that will give us $4,800 in revenue. $30 tickets, we will sell 160 of them. So 160 times 30 will give us a revenue of $4,800. If we change the ticket price up to $45, we will sell um, only 40 tickets. And then 40 times $45 gives us a revenue of $1,800. And if we bump the ticket price up to $50, we will sell zero tickets and zero tickets sold means that we have a revenue of $0. So then if we sell P tickets, right? So what we were doing here was just doing 400 minus eight times the ticket price. That gave us how many tickets we sold. So then over here, we took whatever that number was. So 400 minus 8P represents the number of tickets we sold. And then we were multiplying that by the price of the ticket. So that gave us our revenue. So for which ticket prices will the theater earn no revenue? And that's going to be tickets that are $50 or more. And we can see that because at $50 a ticket, we sell zero tickets. So if we increase it to more than that, then this will say negative amounts of tickets, which isn't possible. So if you, if you even sell it for $51, you're still going to be at zero tickets that are sold. So anything... $50 or higher will not give us any revenue. Then for C, it says, what ticket prices should this theater sell 
tickets if it must earn at least, so at least equal to $3,200 or more to not lose money. So if we go up here, we see $3,200 here at $10, right? So we know $10 and higher will produce $3,200. And then at some point, it dips below $3,200 again, right? So then we kind of want to see if we can figure out where that number is because we skipped over a few numbers here, right? And so if we look at maybe plugging in 35, so if we plug in 35, um, that would give us 400 minus eight times 35, we would sell 120 tickets. And then if we multiply that number by 35, we would get $4,200, so that's fine. So then let's plug in 40. So if we do um, 400 minus eight times 40, we would sell 80 tickets. And then those tickets are $40 a piece, so 80 times 40 would give us 3,200. So that's where we hit 3,200 again, is at 40 dollars a ticket. So we would want to go and sell tickets between 10 and $40 because that um, you get 3,200 or higher between those two numbers. Number two, a company sells running shoes. If the price of a pair of shoes in dollars is P, the company estimates it will sell 50,000 minus 400 P pairs of shoes. Write an expression that represents the revenue in dollars of selling running shoes if a pair of shoes is priced at P dollars. So we know that running, we know that revenue is, um, the amount sold and then times the price. So the amount sold here is 50,000 minus 400 pairs. So that's how many shoes we're going to sell is 50,000 minus 400 times whatever the price is. So there's the number of shoes that we sell. And then the price is P. So the number of shoes sold times the price per pair, that would be our expression. Number three, the function F represents the revenue in dollars a school can expect to receive if it sells this many coffee mugs for X dollars each. Here's a graph, select all statements that describe the situation. So remember, this is the price and this is the revenue being brought in. So a $2 per coffee, at $2 per coffee mug, the revenue is $196. So here's $2. If we go up to here and then we go over to the revenue, it's $400. So this is false. Um, a school can expect to sell 160 mugs if the price is $5. So here's $5. If we go up here, we see that the revenue is $800. So we have to figure out how many mugs that is. So remember, this is, we made $800 at $5 per mug. So we'll just divide this by five to figure out how many mugs we sold. And 800 divided by five gives us 160 mugs. So this one is true. C, the school will lose money, meaning they won't have, they'll have negative revenue if it sells the mugs for $10 for more than $10. Well, more than $10 would be this part of the graph and that's false because you're still bringing in profit here up until we get to here and then dip below $0. So just above $10 won't lose them revenue. It would be more like above 18. The school will earn um, 
if it sells mugs for $10 each. So here's $10 each. And then we go over here and we see that the revenue is $1,000. So that is true. The revenue will be more than $700 if we sell the mugs for between $4 and $14. So here's $4. Here's $14. So if we go between these two amounts, our revenue will be more than 700 and that's true. So here's 700, that whole curve is above there. So this is true. And then the expected revenue will increase if the price per mug is greater than $10. So here's greater than $10. It's saying that our revenue is gonna be increasing above that. Well, this graph is decreasing. So this is false. The revenue is actually going down after $10. Number four, write an equation to represent the relationship between the step number N and the number of small squares Y. So we want to try and look at this pattern and notice some different things. Um, and so step one, we see that we've got two squares. Step two, we see that we have eight. Um, and step three, we see that we have three um, by nine, which is, or three by six, which is 18. So we have two, um, eight, and then, um, what did I say? Three by six, so 18 here. And we want to try and come up with a pattern. And um, if you look at part B, it actually asks if it's quadratic, which means that you have a squared step number. So maybe you want to try and see if, if we can see the step number squared. Um, maybe you see that this is 1 by 2. This is 2 by 4. This is 3 by 6. So we see the step number and then double the step number. So 2 and double 2, 3 and double 3. So we would have n and double n if we wanted to. So one equation you or pattern you might have seen is we have the step number times two times the step number. Or if you were looking for squares, maybe you saw that we've got two squares here. We've got two two by two squares here. We've got two three by three squares here. So here we would have two n by n squares. So another way you could have thought about this is 2n squared, which if you, you know, do some algebra here, when we do n times n, we get n squared. So this one simplifies to 2n squared as well, but either one is fine. So then it says, is this relationship between the step number and the number of squares quadratic? And that would be yes, um, because n is squared. Number five, a small marshmallow is launched straight up in the air with a slingshot. The function h given by this equation describes the height of the marshmallow in meters as a function of time t in seconds. So our units are meters and seconds since it was launched. Use graphing technology to graph the function. So I've done that here. About when does the marshmallow reach its maximum height? So this is asking for when it reach, reaches the mass, maximum height. So we want the time. So here's about the max. And if we go down to the time when that happened, it looks like it's about two seconds after it was launched. Then it asks, how long does it take? So again, how long is time does it take before the marshmallow hits the ground? So here's the marshmallow going up, 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 coming back down, down, down until it hits the ground here at like just after four seconds, okay? And really like after 4.2 seconds. So maybe 4.21 seconds, something like that. So then it says, what domain makes sense for this function? So we're talking time. So it makes sense to start it at zero. We wouldn't have negative time. So we wanna talk zero seconds is less than or equal to our time. And then the time needs to be less than or equal to whenever it hits the ground, okay? So whenever it hits the ground, 
in my case, I estimated that to be 4.21 seconds. So I could say zero, so zero to 4.21 would be a domain that makes sense. Because after 4.21, now we're at negative um, height. So that doesn't make sense anymore. The ball would just hit the ground and then sit there at zero. Number six, a rock is dropped from a bridge over the river. Which graph could represent the distance fallen in feet as a function of time in seconds? So this one, um, remember that you want to be thinking about distance fallen. So if we say, maybe I'll change this from X and Y to be time and distance. So at time zero, this rock has fallen zero feet, right? Now, after one second, it's going to have fallen some type of positive number. So this is going to be some positive amount, right? So maybe it's fallen one feet, two feet, 12 feet. After two seconds, that's going to be an even larger positive number, okay? So when we're looking at this, our initial value needs to be at zero, zero. So that rules out graph B because this one's starting at like 180 feet. That rules out graph D because it's starting at 180 feet. Then we know when we drop something that the amount that these change are not constant. That that's going to start dropping faster and faster as gravity gets hold of it. Well, this one right here is a constant change. A constant rate of change is a linear function, so that rules out graph A, and that means that C is the only option left. Number seven, a bacteria population P is modeled by this equation, 100,000 times 2 to the D, where D is the number of days since the population was first measured. Select all statements that are true in this situation. So A says if we do 100,000 times 2 to the negative 2, that this represents the bacteria population two days before it was first measured. And we know that that's true. So it's first being measured at 0. And so if we go backwards a day, that would be negative 1. And if we go backwards a day, another day, that would be negative 2 days before it was measured. The bac bacteria population three days before it was first measured is 800,000, um, which can't be true because going backwards, it's going to be smaller, right? Because it's doubling each time. So on day zero, it's 100,000. On day two, it'd be 200,000. Okay. And anything before this would be less than 100,000. The day before would be 50,000, 25,000, um, and so on. So it can't be getting bigger, whoops, it can't be getting bigger um, before it was started to being measured in this situation. The population was more than 1,000 one week before it was first measured. So one week in days means um, seven. And in this case, negative seven because it's before. So you would just type in 100,000 times two to the negative seven in your calculator. And we would find out that this is 781.25. And that is not more than 100,000. So that's false. D, the population was more than 1 million one week after it was first measured. So this one, we're going to put in the 100,000 times two to the positive seven. And we're going to get one, two, eight, zero, 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 which is over 12 million, which is definitely more than 1 million. And then the bacteria population four days before it was first measured. So this one's going to be 100,000 times two to the negative four since it was before it was being measured. And when you type this into your calculator, you'll get 6,250. So this one is true.